These pictures clearly demonstrate the simple and down-to-earth gestures of the developer king, who's happy to work with his very own hands. Above all is His Majesty the King's heartfelt concern for the suffering of his subjects. With this, he willingly devotes himself to working side by side with his subjects in the remote areas, in order to help them have a better standard of living, to have enough to live and to eat, and most importantly, to be self-reliant. His Majesty the King emphasizes strengthening the community in each area. When the community is strong enough to become self-reliant, the development then spreads to a wider scale. This is a step-by-step -step development approach, starting small and growing larger. This coincides with the royal speeches given by His Majesty the King on various occasions. He repeatedly suggested that his subjects at all levels, ranging from the family, the community, to the state which is responsible for administering the country, to plan making decisions and implement activities based on moderation, reasonableness and self-immunity, in order to be ready for any unexpected changes. In any case, a strong social foundation must be created before carrying out the next stages of development, which must be done according to actual potential, rather than pursuing a leaping but unsustainable growth, as reflected in His Majesty's speech given on the 18th of July 1974. Development of the nation must be carried out in stages starting with the laying of the foundation by ensuring that the majority of people have their basic necessities through the use of economical means and equipment in accordance with theoretical principles. Once a reasonably firm foundation has been laid, in effect, higher levels of economic growth and development should be promoted. This royal speech has become the mould for the philosophy of sufficiency economy, which represents the guiding light to help the Thai people and society to survive through the hard times of the 1997 economic crisis. To be a tiger is not important. The important thing for us is to have a self-supporting economy. A self-supporting economy means to have enough to survive. The royal speech of His Majesty the King on the 4th of December 1997 made many sectors in the Thai society take one step back and review their past lifestyles. Many began to have more understanding and realization of the idea of sufficiency economy, which includes moderation, prudence, and reasonableness, which means neither too much nor too little, while not placing burdens upon oneself or taking advantages of other people. At the same time, it is necessary to think reasonably before engaging in any operations and create self-immunity in order to be ready for the impacts from changes in the future. Equally crucial, one has to use knowledge, prudence and morality such as honesty, perseverance and effort in planning, making decisions and in all aspects of life. Although his royal guidance gained a great deal of popularity at the time, if we look back we would see that His Majesty the King has long been adhering to and practicing the philosophy of sufficiency economy in his efforts to develop the living conditions of the villagers and farmers in the countryside. This is evident in over 3,000 Royal Development Projects and the six Royal Development Study Centres located throughout Thailand. The problems of land for agriculture, water shortage, the deterioration of the natural resources and the lack of correct agricultural knowledge were the main obstacles impeding the life of the farmers. Furthermore, 
The problems in each area vary according to local geographical conditions. Therefore, in order for the farmers in each region to learn about practical agricultural techniques and means to solve their problems in actual situations, His Majesty the King graciously initiated the establishment of six Royal Development Study Centres scattered throughout all the regions of the country, beginning in 1979. The Royal Development Study Centres serve as the places for conducting research, studies and experiments to obtain guidelines and development methods that are suitable as well as beneficial for the lives of the local people in each area. The successful results are demonstrated to the farmers in the form of a living natural museum. Each centre provides a one-stop service by gathering activities and different government officials to work together to provide services to the general public comprehensively and effectively. Importantly, the farmers and the people in the community can apply the acquired knowledge and technology in real life to make a living, to have enough to live and to eat, as well as to become self-reliant based on the idea of sufficiency economy. After this has been achieved, the farmers can form groups to build a solid foundation for the community and later the country as a whole, to step forward on a sustainable path. The new theory farming practice is the royal initiative under the concept of the philosophy of sufficiency economy, which each centre gives importance to and encourages the farmers to follow in order for them to achieve stability in making a living as well as a state of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. New Theory Farming is the guideline for proper management of land and water resources to create optimum benefits for farmers who own a small piece of land. This is based on the calculation of the quantity of water which should be stored to be enough for agricultural activities all year round. The Royal Initiative on New Theory Farming is divided into three phases. The New Theory Phase 1 aims to make the farmers able to effectively manage water, land, crops, capital and labour in order to achieve a high level of produce and income throughout the year. According to His Majesty the King, the land should be divided into four parts with a ratio of 30-30-30-10. The first 30% is designated for a pond to store water to avoid the risk of a water shortage. The second 30% is set aside for rice cultivation, which can provide sufficient yields for daily consumption all year round. Another 30% is used to grow fruit trees, perennial trees and field crops in an integrated manner, which can provide for daily consumption and the surplus can be sold. The remaining 10% is allocated for housing and other useful structures. The New Theory Phase 1 is the fundamental principle of sufficiency economy by promoting the farmers to have self-immunity and to become self-sufficient and self-reliant. This helps build a solid base for the farmers and their families before moving forward. Once each family within the farming community has a stable living condition, they can then proceed to the New Theory Phase 2, in which they pool their efforts and resources in the form of a group or a cooperative to create benefits for the community at large. The activities include product development and marketing, as well as helping out one another in order to improve the quality of life of the members of the group and creating unity among them. After unifying the efforts and achieving community strength, the Farmers Group can then move on to implement the New Theory Phase 3, which involves making the necessary contacts and coordination with other agencies such as banks or companies. The purpose is to seek support for further investments in product development and to negotiate for fair and reasonable prices for the produce, which satisfy both sides. This is a step-by-step -step development in order to ensure that the farmers first become self-reliant and have a stable living before expanding the development 
to the wider community and society at large in a balanced and sustainable manner. Today, the new theory farming and the philosophy of sufficiency economy have become the main practices in the life of farmers in many areas and regions. Manun Tednam is a farmer in Chiang Mai province who had lost money and had been in debt from rice cultivation. He came to a turning point after applying the new theory farming and dividing his agricultural land into proper proportion which has enabled him to produce food for consumption all year round and sell the surplus to create extra income for the family. ปลูกทุกอย่างที่กินได้นะครับที่มันกินได้ปลูกทุกอย่างที่กินได้แล้วก็เอ่อสิ่งที่มันเป็นสิ่งฟุ่มเฟือยเราก็เลิกผมเอ
ให้ความรู้คนอื่นไปเป็นเงตแบบว่าของกายทานเนาะให้เขาไปมีความรู้ให้เขามีอาชีพเสริมเขาครับแล้วก็เราก็เพื่อว่าแนะได้ความรู้มาจากศูนย์ศึกษาการพัฒนาเอาพุ่งเบนอันหนึ่งมาลาดธนบุรีเนี่ยเราก็ได้จากนู่นมาเราก็เอาความรู้กระจายต่อให้คนอื่นเพื่อถวายในหลวงอีกทีหนึ่งนะก็คิดงั้นเราก็ดีใจและภูมิใจมากครับไม่หวังอะไรตอบแทนนะแค่ full planning and reasonable investment are the immunity for Sawang Pawong, a farmer from Hoi Sai Royal Development Study Center in p e d b u r y Province. He earns a living from integrated farming, in which he analyzes the annual yield in order to improve the production in the following years. He upholds the principles of sufficiency economy in leading his life. <laughs> ที่ไปที่มาปีนี้ลงทุนไปเท่านี้ได้กําไรเท่านี้อะไรเนี่ยผมผมจะรู้หมดนะปลูกอย่างนี้ปีนี้ไม่ได้กําไรเราก็ต้องหาไปปลูกอย่างอื่นผมจะทําพอประมาณของผมที่ผมอยู่ได้ทุกวันเนี่ยเพราะเศรษฐกิจพอเพียงนี่แหละ Although sufficiency economy has played a significant role and become a practical guideline in the agricultural sector, the philosophy of sufficiency economy in reality can be applied by people of all levels and walks of life, both in the city and the rural areas. The philosophy of sufficiency economy can also be applied in the industrial sector through the use of appropriate technology with honesty. Greed, short-term interests, taking advantage of customers, and creating debts far beyond the capability to manage are to be avoided. After the huge flood that destroyed his rice field and put him in financial difficulties, s e r m a n i n t a r a c h e y a had to spend two years in Bangkok searching for temporary jobs. But then. With moral support and a determination to learn, Sen Man returned to his hometown in Bandung District, Udon Thani Province, and followed the principles of the philosophy of sufficiency economy. He applied the knowledge on integrated farming, which he'd studied as a guideline for making a living. At the same time, he persuaded other community members to form many occupational and activity groups. Which have created income and strengthened this community. คำว่าพอเพียงก็คือต้องทําให้เราพอเพียงก่อนใช่ไหมครับให้เราทรงตัวอยู่ได้นะครับไม่หวังร่ํารวยอะไรคือเราพอเพียงแล้วเราก็ช่วยเหลือผู้อื่นนะครับทุกเมื่อนะครับที่เรามีโอกาส By leading his life on the basis of sufficiency and successfully transferring the outcomes to the community. Sen Man won the first prize from the best practice of the philosophy of sufficiency economy contest, organized by the Office of Royal Development Projects Board and the Chai p a t a n a Foundation in the individual category in 2007. Chanti Pratumpa, a farmer in d a l a t s a i District, Nakhon r a t a s i m a Province, was burdened with serious debts after losing. Hundreds of thousands of baht to the middlemen who lured him into working abroad. He will do a visa, and I don't know what the visa is. The country I'm from, I've never been to. So I asked him for money, two thousand baht, and he came to me. I'm a thief. I'm thinking what I'm going to do. At that time, I was thinking I'd die. The desperate life of Chanti revived after. He had applied the principles of sufficiency economy on his own land. He used the royal initiatives on the new theory to initially produce food for consumption all year round before selling the surplus to earn additional income. This way, Chanti received the first prize from the best practice of the philosophy of sufficiency economy contest in the category of the new theory farming in 2007. จากคนเป็นหนี้เป็นสินแล้วกลายเป็นมีอยู่มีกินไม่มีหนี้ไม่มีสินมีลูกหลานคืนถิ่นมีครอบครัวอบอุ่นมีชุมชนที่เข้มแข็งเพราะบารมีของพระบาทสมเด็จพระเจ้าอยู่หัว
In addition, in the business sector, many companies and organizations now apply the philosophy of sufficiency economy to build core competency and a solid grounding based on the concept of self-sufficiency. This is evident in the case of Nithi Foods Company Limited, an agro-processing enterprise in Chiang Mai province. มันจะค่อนข้างจะได้ผลดีเพราะว่าเศรษฐกิจพอเพียงเนี่ยเราเน้นที่การเดินสายกลางนะครับไม่ทําอะไรมากไปหรือทําอะไรน้อยไปเรา